OK, let's get word from Carlo Ancelotti after this game because he had some high praise from his uh, for his squad. He said, they have an incredible mentality. I'm really grateful because they work really hard and it's a fantastic atmosphere. They are very humble, really generous. I think it is the best squad I have had in my career. Now, that is some praise from Carlo Ancelotti. When you think of the squads, even the Real Madrid squads that he's had, the Milan squads, all the top teams that he's managed. That is some praise, Sid Lowe. Yeah, it is. Uh, and I think, of course, the context to it is exactly the way that, that he frames it. This isn't just about saying this is the best squad in terms of the players, because, of course, he would have worked with players who would walk into this Real Madrid team, even though this is a very good Real Madrid team. He's worked with some of the best footballers in the world. He's talked about basically having, having worked with all of them except for Totti and Messi. They're the two players that he would have really liked to have done and hasn't. But it's not really about that. It's about him framing it in those terms, that this is a good squad to work with. This is a squad where you don't have players confronting you. This is a squad where you don't have really significant fault lines within it, where you don't have a, a, a problem of egos, where you don't have a problem of players not getting on with each other. And in that sense, it's relatively easy to work with. Now, of course, one of the reasons it's easy to work with is because Ancelotti is so good at that side of the game. But it's been easier for him than it has at other places. In the build-up to this game, he was talking about his role at Bayern Munich and why that didn't last very long and why they sacked him quite early into his second season. And of course, one of the problems with them was that some of the changes he was trying to do were difficult with some of the dressing room heavyweights. And he felt, and he said this in the preview to the game, that he didn't get the support from Bayern Munich that he needed to be able to do his work well. Now, at Real Madrid, he's been able to manage that dressing room. So I think that's the key to what he's saying here is that these are really good footballers. Obviously, they are really good footballers. But on top of that, this isn't a group that causes you the kind of problems that sometimes comes with managing superstars. And what's going to happen when Mbappe comes next season then, Sid? Mm. <laughs> well, that's the question everyone's asking. Obviously, in, in fairness, I think most people are asking this about the positions of the players on the pitch. So we see, we, well, we saw it in this game and we've seen it quite a bit this season that both Vinicius and Rodrigo would rather play off the left-hand side. Yes, they can come in and be a little bit narrow at times. And Vinicius has, has kind of evolved his game a little bit to play a bit more inside rather than out on the left wing. But that's their, their, their preferred position and that is Mbappe's preferred position. So unless you massively overload the left side, which of course they could do, I suppose, in theory, and have an, an asymmetrical lineup, they do need to find a solution to that. And I think that's been the way it's framed in terms of putting the players on the pitch in the right positions rather than in terms of that kind of dressing room harmony and whether or not there might be fault lines that open up. That, I think, is a much longer term question to see whether Mbappé is at all problematic in that sense. But I think fundamentally the question is, which position do you put those players in? That's an interesting one, isn't it, Sid? And I just wonder what the talk is right now, because it felt when Mbappe first didn't come to Madrid, when it was expected that he would, it felt like there was this real big need for him to be there. Does it feel like it's not talked about as much now because we're seeing this version of Vinny? Or is it just because they think he's coming anyway and it's all going to happen? Yeah, I, I, th I think that's a good question. I think the answer is a little bit of both of those things. Um, it, it's not really a kind of... It, it doesn't have that, that weight, that question, partly because there is just the assumption that he just does come now. Uh, as you say as well, the fact that Vinicius has played really well, maybe there, there isn't the, the, the urgency to bring him, which is why, as I say, the question mark really is about how you fit these pieces together. You know, not, not that there's any doubt about whether you have them, not that there's any doubt that anyone, uh, anyone is going to start and that someone else is going to have to sit on the bench. They will both start. I think a couple of years ago, you might have thought, you know what, if you had to let Vinicius go to bring Mbappe in, perhaps you'd do it. I don't think anyone would do that now. Which isn't to say anyone would say, hey, don't bring me Mbappe. Then they absolutely do want him. But there is a sense now that what you have to do is find a way of them both playing. I think as well it's worth remembering that this is the way it feels right now in May. If you go back to August or September, I think there was a belief that Real Madrid was short up front. Because, of course, Karim Benzema went a year earlier than expected. Harry Kane was the player that, that Carlo Ancelotti had identified as someone who could come in now and play up front and be a really good forward that would link those wide players into the game as well as score goals himself. And they didn't go for Kane, partly, of course, because they knew that Endrick was coming and they knew that Mbappé would probably come. And so then what you do is you go and buy José Lu on loan, 1.5 million euros loan fee from second division Espanol to give you the backup there. But you, you, you create a new forward line. 
and you create a new forward line with Bellingham as a sort of false nine, with Vinicius playing on the left, but sometimes going inside, with Rodrigo going to the right-hand side, but also coming inside at times and trying to find a way of making it work. And that was then. And at that point, I think a lot of people would have thought, I'm not sure this really works. Madrid do need that striker. They could really do with Mbappé now. Now, fast forward to where we are now, nine months on, and obviously it doesn't look quite so urgent. But that's not to say, as I say, and this is really important, that is not to say that anyone thinks, I oh, don't bring him. In fact, the opposite is true. Everyone's now looking at this Real Madrid team and thinking, they're good already. Imagine how good they're going to be when Mbappé turns up as well. Frightening. So, mm. obviously, Sid offered up the context there in mm. which Ancelotti was speaking mm. and the fact that it's the squad harmony and saying that, yeah, you know, some of his former team players may have walked into this Real Madrid side right now. But let's have some fun anyway, shall we? Because we went back to take a look at the 2005 starting 11 for Milan under Carlo Ancelotti. And Stevie is absolutely a Milanista in this sense <laughs> of the words right now. You were like, no way is any Real Madrid player getting in there. He said maybe Courtois to begin with, right? Right. I mean, the thing is, over time you do sort of forget, but then when you go and look at it on paper, my goodness, look at this. <laughs> look at, for the wow. start, look at the back four. <laughs> Maldini, <laughs> Nesta, Stalin, Cafu. I mean, seriously. Pirlo, Seedorf, Kaká, Gattuso. Now, Gattuso you need because of what he does on the field. And then up front, Shevchenko and Crespo. I mean, really? <laughs> Dida for Courtois. Maybe, maybe Modric or Cruz for Gattuso. That's about it, isn't it? You, you see, I mean, where, would you, where would you play Vinny? Do you take Crespo out and play Vinny? I'm not so sure. Because with what they have in the middle of the park, it's a different type of game as well. You know, he, is he going to get that amount of time to be running at people all the time? Where you got Crespo and Shevchenko getting played in by Kaká coming late, a la Bellingham. You got Seedorf picking people out, dropping balls in. You got Pirlo picking people out for fun. I mean, that that team is absolutely scary. How did that game end? It just shows yeah. you why we play the game. <laughs> <laughs> There's a reason why we don't play the game on paper. There's a reason why you have to step on the field because you never know. That that was an anomaly. What happened with Liverpool that game? That team is absolutely sensational. This, I, I mean, there are players of a generation uh, all over that park. And, and uh, to Stevie's point, um, absolutely, yes, you have Courtois over, over Dida. But let's be honest, Real Madrid have played most of this season without Courtois. You'd have Dida over Lunin. Um, so, I, I mean, it, it's, it's, it's so difficult to make these comparisons. For, for, for any number of reasons. Um, but goodness me, you, you look at that. What were we? So just short of 20 years on? In 20 years' time, how many of those players that are playing for Real Madrid now will invoke the kind of sentiment that that Milan team does presently? I, I, I think four, maybe five. I, I'm not sure the nine that, that we wear kind of point into no. Robbo, do you care to wade in on this, this Milan versus Madrid? I mean, in terms of individuals, the Milan side is, is much better. It's got much better players. But what I think Angelotti's talking about is the spirit, the squad. Remember, it's not just Courtois that's been out. It's been Eder Militao that's been out for most of the season. Alibas, they're the two, they were the two the first picks at centre-half. So the players that have come in, Rudiger and Nacho or Chiumani going back in there at times, they've done a fantastic job. When they need somebody to come on the field, they took Kroos off yesterday and Modric came on and started to dictate the play. They made good decisions. You know, a Vinny Junior, who, did, who didn't have his best first half, in the second half he went out to the left wing and said, I'm going to take on Kimmich. And he changed the game. So they've got players that have got good football understanding. They seem to have a good team spirit. And they've got that belief that they can win games even when they're not playing well. And that's why I think he calls them the, one of the best squads he's, he's worked with. 